What's up everyone, my name is Chris, welcome to my channel. Thank you if you've already subscribed, the 3,000 plus people who've already done it, that's pretty awesome. Today we're gonna to be checking out the Trek Merlin 6 for 2021. Not a lot of changes from last year, but if you're new to this kind of thing, then this will be a helpful uh, kind of review as to why you should buy this bike. All right, so the Trek Merlin series is one of Trek's most popular bikes. It's a great entry level bike that you can kind of start with trails with, but then at the same time, you're not gonna break the bank. As well, the gearing setups vary throughout the models. This one is right smack in the middle between a mountain bike and a commuter bike, or that kind of everyday do everything bike when we reference commuter. If you're looking for a true commuter, you should probably check out like the Dual Sport. So with the Trek Marlin series, you're getting 29 inch wheels on most models with a big 2.2 inch wide tire. This will give you the fastest rolling and widest tire without adding too much resistance. On the smaller frames, you do get a 27 and a half inch wheel as shown here. They come with Trek Zone, Bontrager branded XR2 tires, which is a fast rolling tire in the trails. You know, in those muddy situations, you might want to upgrade, but for general purpose riding in good conditions, this is great on, on the road and off the road. They come with more than enough suspension, 100 mils. That'll get you going. XC race bikes have about the same, so don't think you need more. It does come with an SR Suntour 30 mil stanchion. So what does it mean when you have 30 mil stanchions? So this means they're getting stiffer and stiffer each time. The thicker it is, the more rigidity it'll have so the actual shock will work more effectively. With this one, SR Suntour is still a good brand. It is always put on the entry level bikes, but they do make high quality stuff. So don't disregard it just because it's not a Fox fork or anything along those lines. It's still good. And especially for the price range of this one, you're still getting a very competitive bike. Aluminum frame, so it's nice and lightweight. This bike weighs in just around the 33 pound mark. You get all integrated cables, which is fantastic. It really makes it look really clean. As well, it does add a small amount of protection to those cables because they're not running on the underside of your bike. As well, wear points on the underside of the bike now from those cables aren't gonna happen. You used to have to get a lot of the little clear stickers and put them on and it was just kind of annoying. Drivetrain wise, you go into a two by eight. So for non-bikers, there's, there's a lot of different types. You'll hear a lot about one bike in the mountain bike world. Two by is probably second favorite. One by is probably the most preferred and then there's three by. And what that is referring to is in the front gear range, there's two main gears on this particular model, or one on higher end ones, three on lower end ones. Benefit to having less gears on the front is you're gonna have a lot simpler of a drivetrain. So all the gears are on the back, you may lose a bit of range or skip a bit of the increments, but it's gonna be simple. So the nice compromise with the two by is you still get an extra low gear on the front, making it very easy to ride. So again, for beginners, it's gonna really benefit for you. But that chain is still under more tension and less noise, a little simpler than three on the front. With a two by eight, you get a good range in the back that makes it feel comfy. You won't have to switch back and forth in the front one too often, but you have that extra low gear for all those kind of difficult climbs or those times you just need to bring up that cadence of your pedal stroke a little bit easier. This one is a hardtail. What that references to is there is no rear suspension. So that just makes it a little bumpier in the rougher stuff. Benefit to it though, one, it's cheaper, and two, you actually get more direct power to it. So there are some people in higher end bikes, which are 5,000 plus, who still choose a hardtail because it is much more efficient for your pedal stroke. Big benefit though is the cost of it. With this one, you do get Shimano hydraulic disc brakes. So that's gonna get you stopped really nicely. It's fantastic that on such low end bikes now, or entry level bikes, it's not really low end anymore. It's just an entry level bike. You actually get high quality parts. So the brakes still work great. Yes, you compare them to a $10,000 bike, they feel like a junk, but these are actually pretty responsive feeling. They have a good feel, touch to them, very kind of tactile response to them they'll get you through pretty much anything you need to do. Obviously, if you're doing full downhill, the rotors are fairly small, so you're not gonna get that heat dissipation as much, and it's not gonna have 
as high brake fade range. Comes with the standard plastic pedals. So that is the number one thing I'd recommend. Plastic pedals aren't too bad. Big downside to these ones is they don't have any real bite to them. So if you are gonna be mountain biking with them, so I would highly recommend upgrading the pedals if you're doing the mountain biking side of things. You just gotta get a higher quality pedal. Bearings are gonna last longer. And most beneficially is the tactile feel to it. So you're actually gonna get something which is gonna bite into your shoe with either metal studs or much more aggressive plastic ones. These are definitely entry level, which one keeps it affordable, but more likely if you're just cruising around for ice cream on this bike, it's actually gonna be a pretty comfy feeling on your shoe. You're not gonna slip off and just destroy your shins like you could with something a little more aggressive made for mountain biking. So this comes with a 31.8 mil handlebar. That means it's actually pretty respectable. You get a little more stiffness out of it, a little more um, kind of durability from it from crashing and such. They do still put comfort hand grips on it. So I know some people who ride the trails with them, most people will switch to a softer, more grippy one. Again, about that kind of getting that contact point gripped into you. Um, the trails, it will feel a little better, but obviously the comfort ones are designed for comfort. So if you're cruising around, a lot of the time, those will actually be a better choice for you they're just a comfier grip. A lot of people look at the Merlin 5 and enjoy the price of it, enjoy the features of it. But why should you buy Merlin 6? Honestly, it's better in every single way. So even if you're commuting with it, you still get that multiple chain ring on the front for the easy use and easy comfort, uh, finding that right gear. But it's gonna be much better in the off-road side of things. That being said, I don't see a downside to it. So that's why it may be a better buy. The tires are the same. The suspension is upgraded, so you're actually gonna get a little better in the off-road again. The brakes are the same, but hydraulic disc brakes are still gonna work great no matter where you use them. So who is the Marlin 6 for? So I think this is for anyone who's really gonna be venturing off-road a little more and a little more and a little more. You're gonna really notice those benefits of the better suspension, better shifting to it. It's a lot faster, a lot snappier. If you take the Marlin 5, for instance, and then you compare it to a Marlin 6 very quickly around the block, it is a noticeable speed upgrade. As well, once you actually get on the trails and that rougher stuff comes along, that two by system is gonna hold up a lot better. It's gonna shift a little easier. Again, the speed of it's just gonna make it that much more comfy to actually use off-road. On road though, all those still apply. So I don't see why everyone doesn't choose this as their primary bike and then go from there. The Marlin 5 is an excellent bike, but it is just an excellent bike with an entry set of parts to it. You can't go wrong with it, but it's definitely not the fanciest thing out there. If you can swing the budget for the Marlin 6, the shifting and suspension are very noticeable between the Marlin 5 and Marlin 6. If you're looking to spend a teeny bit more money, but actually get a noticeable, like tangible, noticeable amount better, I really think the Marlin 6 is there without blowing out the budget and going well above a thousand plus dollars in most places. On most frames as well, they do have two bottle cage ones. I'll just bring up that this, this uh, smaller size one does not. You just can't fit a bottle on the seat tube there but both of them are all full for the rack mounts and otherwise all that kind of adjustability that way. All right, I hope this video helped you out. The Merlin 6 is truly an awesome bike. It is very user friendly. It's a little simpler to use than a Merlin 5 because you don't need to worry about all those gears. It's gonna perform better guaranteed and noticeably I think it's well worth a little bit more money. So if you are looking to get one of these, I would highly recommend checking out Trek's website, doing your research. There's links below to all that kind of stuff. Most of the time you'll find it's completely out of stock online and you should get down to your local bike shop and put a pre-order in pretty much yesterday because they're most likely gone before you've got there. All right guys, my name's Chris. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment for more of this kind of stuff and beyond. Otherwise, good luck. Thanks, guys.